Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkinson. Can you tell I'm enjoying this winter theme? Today we're going to have some fun. Just relax and we're going to paint an adorable snowman. I did this again on some black paper. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I let my patrons from my Patreon page vote on whether or not I should add snow to Mr. Frosty here. And they pretty much all of them overwhelmingly said, yes, give him some snow. So I'll teach you how to do that. Also, I've been loving painting snowmen for years. Uh, this is one that I did last year as a tutorial here on the channel. Snowmen are always fun to paint. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll do that right now. We have a lot of fun here. Also, if you'd like to support this channel on my Patreon page, I would appreciate it. It's how I can keep these free videos coming to all of you. And here's the reference image. It's from unsplash.com. And this photographer, Kristen Tarzi, I like he said, I'm a flawless, creative, and hardworking guy, except when I see a dog, then I have to go play with him. <laughs> Sorry for that. So just a shout out to Christian for that lovely photo. Now here I am once again using the Arteza black paper that's made for acrylic and for oil paints. And what's this white stuff I'm putting on here? Well, it's not going to stay white. This is clear gesso, not regular gesso. It dries clear and it has little bits of sand in it. I know that sounds weird if you've never done any pastel painting or seen any of my do-it-yourself pastel papers. You can even see a little bit of the sand after I blow it dry. See how it dried clear? And that little, some of those sand pieces just brush right off. But this paper, because it's water friendly, receives the clear gesso so well and it gives just an extra little sandy surface so that I can get more pastel layers and get more vibrant color. Uh, you can work on it unsanded, but uh, I really like giving it a little bit of grit and texture. You can also do the same tutorial with whatever you have. You can do this in other mediums if you want. The point of this is to have some fun, enjoy the holidays, celebrate our risen Savior. I don't like to just say Jesus was born but that he was resurrected and he's alive and he saved a sinner like me. Okay I'll quit preaching now. I know some of you guys have a hard time with that. Back to art, Susan. I'll try to contain myself. All right, I'm just doing some general shapes. This is super basic, right? I just made a horizon line in the back. And by the way, this is a new pastel. They're little sticks or long kind of rectangular sticks of pastel that are a little bit harder than most pastels. So they're, they're great for sketching and um, they're also great for underpaintings and I happen to really like my new pastels. I use them a lot. They don't get the glory that the real softy pastels do. Uh, many of the soft pastels have the most vibrant color. I need to do a video one day just describing how pastels are made and what makes pastels different hardness and softness. It's also interesting. All right, so I got a little shape in of the snowman. Now there's a hill behind him in this reference image and uh, there's really no sky showing in this and the hill is a little bit um well it, it's i'm gonna make it purposely more subdued but when anything's far away you can break out your artistic license and give it more of a or increase your focal point which is the snowman by decreasing the amount of detail in a background and just making it more subtle so uh, that's what i have in my mind and i'm just using such a light touch to get in my big shapes and values. And I think that was probably one of the things that I struggled with early on in my uh, pastel art journey. Well, my art journey period, pastels are one of the first mediums I, I tried um, and got a little bit more serious with it. And one of the mistakes I made was I thought I had to create too much too soon. I thought it had to start looking like something you know, worthwhile uh, before they really do. And you end up working on one area, overworking it. Your painting by the end loses that impressionistic painterly effect. That's one of the questions I get all the time too, is how do you keep your work loose and painterly? By working the whole and by not being afraid to let it not look like much, until it all comes together. And if you're new at this, don't feel bad. I mean, I think everybody has to kind of go through the same journey, you know, um, but with perseverance and um, a positive attitude, you can do it. Uh, sometimes I'll use my finger to blend a little bit 
and um, but but not a lot I'm gonna bring out another blending tool right here other than my finger um, it's called pipe foam insulation you can get it at a hardware store literally the stuff you use to insulate pipes I don't know what artist um, originally came up with this I've seen artist Karen Margulis use this a lot and it works quite well for softening things and uh, but I stress don't over blend especially when we get to the final layers uh, we want to keep that crisp bright color that's inherent to soft pastels especially in our focal point area now you see how the snow in the foreground or where the snowman is is lighter that background hill seems like it's in shadow um, and that brings me to a point of we're going to consider the source of light we always want to do that when painting and in this particular case the light seemed like it was coming from the upper right maybe a little bit behind that hill somehow it's not hitting the hill quite as much but it's hitting the snowman on his right or his left side our right side of his um, head body and, and bottom section there so um, that's going to be something that I develop later uh, you'll see me first work, working my darker values first middle to dark values now the paper's already dark so I don't have to put in a lot of dark colors with this that's the neat thing about working on a black surface and uh, once again you can use whatever you want the same principles apply if you're working on a white surface but you might have to add some more darks because your paper is going to be lighter um, I like working on black surfaces um, so you won't see me adding a lot of darks but I'm going to reserve the um, layering of lighter pastels until probably more mid midway to the towards the end of this video you'll see that snowman come to life he's going to look dark for a little while i've just scumbled in some shapes of trees these trees are far away they look almost like weeds in the background and i'm just making myself some little notes as to where they are i'll go in later and i'll give a little bit more um, shadow and highlights to that hill and uh, carve in some of the shapes of the trees a little bit more I try to resist the urge to keep working on any one area just get it in and move on because that way once again your painting's going to feel whole and it's going to make more sense as a whole and it's not going to be so tight and overworked by the way this is all real time and uh, because it was just a small fun painting I think it was about 30 minutes long and uh, I wanted you guys to be able to just relax maybe you can even do this uh, during Christmas time, you know, uh, I know Christmas is busy usually with family and eating and all of that, but usually there's some fun downtime. If you've got family members or kids or grandkids and you want to do a little fun project, uh, this one might be fun. And if you don't have pastels and you have some watercolor laying around, I also have a Christmas watercolor uh, tutorial that I uploaded a, a week or so ago. And that one is super basic and fun. You can even buy the little templates it's only five dollars for 12 templates uh, that you can use it you know this is super easy beginner type of watercolor um, fun lesson so I'll try to include that yes I'll do that I'll try to include that as the link at the end of this video or maybe I'll even put it up here I have this way I can put little uh, cards for information up at the top right corner um, so that's a really good and fun one to do around the holidays as well uh, so now I've worked a lot of the um, uh, the blue and teal areas I love blues teals and purples for snow it just is so much more interesting than grays you know and so the area that I did in the pink and the lavender that's a little bit more of the area where the Sun is hitting now why do you think it would be more pink and lavender rather than blue and teal well pink is a warmer tone and lavender is a warmer tone than blue and the Sun has warmth so I always say you know it's really not all that hard when you really just think about the logic of it all wherever the Sun is it's gonna be brighter and it's gonna be warmer and if you don't know what warm and cool colors are get a color wheel get a pocket color wheel I have all these little tools I use uh, I have an Amazon store in my videos I always have a link to my Amazon store and I have things categorized to make it easy for you to find things you don't have to buy them on the Amazon store um, I get a teeny kickback but it doesn't cost you anything it's the same cost for you but it just makes it easier for you to find some of these things and the one with the color wheel is um, studio tools I think it's called and I have a grayscale finder on there and it's really cheap it's like a dollar 
a couple bucks, something like that. So these little tools will help you to understand more about color theory. I think often color theory, people get afraid of it. Oh, like it's so difficult. And gosh, the more I've learned about it, I'm like, oh, well, it's really, it's common sense, you know? Uh, so I love making things simple like that. Now you can see I'm adding, think of these like spheres. You know, have you ever done the, uh, a sphere, a circle, and you consider where your light is and that's where your highlight is. And then you've got your mid values. Then you've got your darker values kind of on the backside. Then you've got a little shadow. Um, we've well, got your cast shadow. You've got a little bit of light popping back up on one area. So that's all I'm doing here. These are literally just three balls that I'm giving the values to. And um, uh, this is, I would say, my middle uh, middle value blue. And this, by the way, this pastel I have in my hand is a Mount Vision pastel. This one too. And they are from a set that's called Thunderstorm Gray. I love this set because it has neutrals in it um, that obviously are nice for thunderstorm type of painting, but they're just, this is another one, they're just nice neutrals. They still have color. They're not the, the pastels that have the most brilliant or high saturation, but they're uh, just a really nice set to get some uh, nice, easy neutral tones in. And Mount Vision Pastels happens to be, the, the manufacturing uh, facility happens to be in the Tampa Bay area of Florida, where I am. And uh, I went and did a tour and met the owner, and uh, he's such a neat guy, Carl Kelly. And he gave me a tour and I made a video. So I think that one's called How Pastels Are Made. So I've got over 600 videos here on the Monet Cafe channel, and um, uh, it's been a labor of love. And uh, But I tell you, I am so, so grateful that I started my Patreon page. I would not have been able to keep doing this, guys, because my husband and I, we lost our jobs due to COVID. And um, someone had asked and said, would you start a Patreon page? But people would like to support you. And I was hesitant about doing it. I thought, man, that's going to be a lot of work. Uh, and it's been work, but I love it. We have the greatest family of artists as my patrons, and it's just really neat. So I'm sorry if I sound like I talk about that all the time, but it's a, it's a great part of my life, actually. I love you guys. Um, so now you can see, again, where's the source of light? Remember I said to the upper right, our right? And if the sun is casting a shadow or casting its light on that area, um, that's why I gave it a little bit of a warmer tone and a pink, a little mauve color is that. Now it's getting cooler. It's still not a super dark value in the middle area. It's mid middle tones. So I'm cooling it off a bit with that blue. Um, and again, if you can keep that principle in mind, you don't have to really be confused about how color works. It's like, uh, I always say, we cool off in the shade. So that's the same thing that happens with colors. Um, so I am going to, give you guys some Christmas music. I've been making a lot of videos in December and um, Labor of Love, of course. Uh, I've got another one coming that's beginner focused. Uh, the last two that I did, I'd say were more intermediate, um, but this next series is gonna be really focused for the beginner. We're gonna do four winter landscapes and uh, keep it really simple on watercolor paper. And I'll once again be using the clear gesso to give a little sanded surface. So if you're a real beginner, keep an eye out for that video. Again, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon because then you get notified when I upload a new video. Um, okay, so the music I'm gonna add, I really love adding the music and you guys comment and let me know. It's fun for me. I like, I kind of like doing the videos as well, even though they, they are time consuming, they take a lot of work, but uh, I do enjoy videography. Um, but the music is a fun part for me. I'm a musician. I sing and write songs. I might even jump in and sing along with some of them. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do that. But um, I recently found another place where I can get some uh, music I can share and not get a copyright issue. So these are some a little fun, jazzy Christmas songs. Enjoy. Uh, put this in while you're having Christmas and listen to the songs while I paint a snowman and I'll be back uh, when I add the snow. Oh, here he is, uh, a little bit of a photo before I start adding some of the other highlights. All right, here's the music. I'm done for now, I'll be back.
just loved that song and it's ending right at this point where I decided to put his arms which are like twigs and you know I was actually listening to some praise and worship music while I was painting and I just decided he's got to have his arms raised praising the Lord and uh, so you know Christmas is really a time it should be a time of family and love and celebrating like this happy snowman and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video I I love adding snow to paintings especially kind of whimsical paintings like this I kind of liked him without snow as well so I, I made a poll for my patrons on my patreon page and they overwhelmingly voted add snow and while there were some who felt a little like I did like well he looks good without the snow too so I decided to add some snow and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now I want to say I'm adding a little bit of this brown here once again the Sun is um, hitting him on that right side and so when if it's a stick you know it's gonna be a little brown some warm tones so here he is praising the Lord and um, just like me and yes see I had to even make a little thing to put on my Instagram page but now I'm gonna show you how to add snow now I did do this for Instagram and often when you make something on Instagram that's like a real um, you have to do it in a vertical format so pardon the vertical format but you're gonna see real quickly all I do is get a cheese grater and some pastels I I use not just white or light colored but sometimes I'll even use a little blue and I just scrape a little bit on there I put a piece of tracing paper on top because you know this would fall right off if you didn't do what I'm doing now then I get anything round I'm using a candle you could use a rolling pin or whatever press it in and it sticks into the surface so wasn't that fun and I may have gotten a little heavy-handed with the snow he looks like he's in a blizzard but he's happy <laughs> that's what counts and keep an eye out for those beginner winter scenes that I will be uploading hopefully within a week God bless you all thank you for making Monet Cafe special and Merry Christmas and happy painting